everyone, this is Matthew welcoming you to another episode of Indian Country Farms. And today we've got Susan. Wave at the good people, Susan. There you go. <laughs> She's going to be uh, putting some uh, some homemade bread together. We're using uh, an unbleached flour, is that correct? Yes. And uh, just a commercial yeast, although we do have some sourdough going. We haven't quite got our sourdough worked out the way we want it. So, sourdough starter. Yes. So we're uh, we're going to save that one until another day. And uh, when we get it all ironed out just the way we want it, then we'll come back and show you. All right, Susan, what are we doing? Okay, so we're going to use a commercial yeast. And this is what I use. I buy it in bulk. And it's safe instant from my friend Miriam. And uh, when I open it up, I'll put it in this little uh, brown jar keep it in a dark jar, and the rest of it goes in the freezer. As to protect it from ultraviolet light, is that correct? Yep. Because yeast is a bacteria. Okay, so uh, we're going to put two teaspoons of yeast in here, in half a, let's see, what is it, half a cup of water, because I'm going to make two loaves of bread. And then what I do is, to get it really going, I put a little sugar, this is my sugar, I put a little sugar in there just to kind of help it along the way to when it, to prove it. And <clears throat> here in a couple of minutes, you'll see what I mean by proofing it. It'll, like here's the, here's what it looks like before. And when it's proofing, it'll like have a foam on top of it and that means it's ready. So we're going to let that sit aside. This water needs to be warm. It should not be hot. If it's hot, it'll kill the yeast. And in my recipe, I also use two cups of warm water along with it. Now, I'm not going to make it with my, I'm not going to mix it up today with my um, mixer. I'm going to do it by hand. So here's two cups of water, warm water, not hot. Mm -hmm. And... A third cup of sugar. You can use less if you want or more. And what else? <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, hold on one second. I always put an egg in mine. I started doing that in the last year, and for some reason, the bread just tastes better. So now those are homegrown eggs, right? Yep, these are homegrown eggs. Look at how pretty orange that yolk is. Oh, nice. <clears throat> so, yeah, I put an egg in mine. You don't have to, but I do. For some reason, it just makes a better bread for me. And then you want two and a half tablespoons of an oil. I don't use canola oil or vegetable oil. Um, I just use lard. So I've heated that up, and for those of you who are wondering lard, uh, the reason for lard is lard is a, a natural fat, whereas uh, canola oil um, or, or corn oil or other oils, uh, they're almost always genetically modified. Uh, and it's, it's not, you won't get that much oil. If you ate fistfuls of corn, you wouldn't get that much corn oil. So the, the jury's still out on that, whether it's, uh, whether that's the good for you or not. Okay, so here's our unbleached flour. And you yeah. can get this at the stores. Um, it's hard to find because, you know, why do we use unbleached as opposed to bleach? I mean, um, <laughs> well, now I have been told that the unbleached flour, the yeast is able to access the nutrients better and it rises better. Um, personally, the, the fewer steps that we get to to have our food, the better. The more processed, the more likely that somebody will make a mistake and we'll lose our nutrients know. instead of nutrient dense. Food will have nutrient less food. True. Okay. Okay. And let's see. We'll put some more flour in. I'm still waiting for my um, yeast to proof, but you can see it's starting it's to starting foam to up. Yeah. There's the line. Yeah. 
And the um, foam is uh, carbon dioxide gas that the yeast manufactures as it is eating the sugar. Okay, so anyway, this is going to get thicker. I only used the wire whisk for the first two cups of flour. Well, actually I'm going to have to use something because I'm not using my mixer today. So it's been a while since I've done this one by hand. Even though she has this really cool KitchenAid mixture that somebody really cool give her for Christmas one year. This is true. That's yeah. under this here right here. Oh, I like my little KitchenAid. Oh, oh, there you go. Anyway, so um, I think we're okay to go ahead and pour this in, the yeast. Once you get going, uh, you just start to do your own thing. Some people put uh, uh, bread enhancers in there, but again, that's something extra. That's a chemical or whatever. I don't know. We don't put that stuff in our bread. We've been making our bread now for, what, four years? Oh, at least. No, probably more than that. You start making... Uh... Oh, it's been it's been probably six or seven years, I'd say. No, I don't think it's been oh. that long. Anyway, you can see that it's getting thicker. Now, if we count the bread machine days, because she oh, did use bread sure. machine to make bread for quite some time. Yeah, I first started out with that bread machine. So, yeah, I think I'll add just a dollop of honey in just here. A, too. Now, this is a uh, this is a commercial honey that yeah. uh, you know exactly. What's going on there? I don't know where it came from. I don't know. I'm going to assume this has been processed a lot. And basically what we've got is the honey sugar left. And a lot of the things that you want, like your uh, your bee pollen and stuff like that, are, have been extracted. Okay. Um, um, okay. I'm a because that can be so tough. I'm a little out of sorts because Matthew is standing right where I normally put my big old five-gallon bucket of flour. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I haven't added the salt yet. I, I started adding my salt later on in the, in the process. And I believe the recipe is two teaspoons of salt. Salt is like the preservative in it. Okay, so I'm just going to mix it up with this spatula until it's ready to drop out onto the, the counter. <clears throat> um, some of my online friends that also make bread for their families, instead of using, oops, instead of using a a dough enhancer. Some of them have used vinegar, and I every once in a while might throw some vinegar in there. I don't notice. I don't think I've really noticed a difference. But last week my bread. Now some weeks your bread might turn out okay. Sometimes it'll turn out wow, it's really good. Last week our bread was really good. It turned out nice and soft, and so I will add just a little bit of. It. Vinegar. Oh, maybe I won't. Wait, where's our vinegar? Here it is. <laughs> like I said, I'm a lot of sorts. So this, this is the distilled white vinegar. We yeah. uh, keep white and vinegar I'm... distilled and uh, apple vinegar distilled and raw apple vinegar around. And occasionally I make some. Uh, not very often. Because uh, I really, I'm not sure what I'm doing it just yet. When I get it figured out, uh, maybe we'll do something on that. <laughs> Anyway, so it's starting to get more 
crumbly like, but a little sticky. There went that book again, almost in the water bucket. We have to keep bucket. a bucket here to recycle some of the wastewater. That's our uh, book with the recipe for the bread. <laughs> oh, well, I this one I'm, I've got memorized finally after how many years? I don't know. Well, I don't we can't know. decide how many years. I think it's six.